Okay, um, here's our Cyber Anatomy Lab preview for the oral cavity uh, dissection. Uh, last time, um, we bisected the head um, through the maxilla and um, may or may not have cut through the tongue, so that's kind of where we're picking up um, from last time. Your tongue should, um, if it's still intact, you will be able to um, pretty easily do the surface anatomy landmarks, um, like the, um, the sulcus terminalis with the valley papillae um, that form in front of it the foramen cecum. Um, you'll, you might be able to see the sort of irregular tissue of the lingual tonsil. Um, on the lateral aspect, you might be able to see some of the foliate um, papillae uh, on the side. No promises there, um, but um, have a look. Um, do the surface anatomy before you do the rest of the tongue dissection, because it, sor it sort of changes once you um, start cutting and sectioning. It's, it's harder to do these basic things um, second. So do that first. Then go ahead and section through the tongue um, with a blade and cut through the mandible with an electric saw. Um, and then that'll set us up to do uh, the rest of our work. So um, once all that bisection work is done, um, you'll be able to see sort of a hemisected uh, mouth. And uh, in the midline section tongue, you'll very easily be able to see the muscle fibers of genioglossus. Um, it, it'll be, it'll look huge. No problems. Um, but spend some time uh, in Firda genioglossus identifying these three muscles that form um, sort of a stack um, from genioglossus down to geniohyoid, which goes from the genu back to the hyoid bone, um, which is here. And then um, the mylohyoid, um, which we've identified several times as having the transverse fibers. And then the digastric muscle, which will look similar to geniohyoid, but more superficial. So um, check those guys out. Uh, we get this all oriented before we go to the lateral tongue. Um, your next um, area of work is actually going to be um, work pulling the tongue medial, like the half section tongue medial, and working in the floor of the mouth on the lateral aspect. Um, and so I'm going to have to sort of turn this thing around a little bit in order to do that. Um, this is sort of the space that we'll be working in. And obviously the floor of the mouth doesn't look like this. Um, that's because we've gone ahead and removed all of the mucosa from the floor of the mouth, and that should be the very first thing that you do. Um, the submandibular gland and sublingual glands will probably be pretty easy to ID um, as soon as you get that mucosa removed. Um, likewise, uh, the lingual nerve um, should jump right out at you. Uh, that's a pretty big nerve. and you'll be able to identify it positively by seeing it come into the side of the tongue um, where it's innervating the anterior two-thirds. Um, you might also be able to see the um, submandibular ganglion um, hanging from the lingual nerve in the vicinity of the submandibular gland. Um, so have a good look for that um, in that space. This is one of those ganglia that you can find. Um, the other structure that I don't have represented here because um, it's not in this particular model, but the submandibular uh, duct, um, or Wharton's duct. Th this uh, duct comes from the submandibular gland and then comes over to the sublingual papilla and opens up underneath the tongue in the midline. So um, it's going to cross the lingual nerve um, on its way to that location. So um, do take the time to identify that relationship. That's a pretty consistent relationship in the floor of the mouth. All right, uh, next um, we're looking for in addition to the lingual, the hypoglossal nerve is um, kind of in a similar place, it's just more inferior. Um, where you're going to be coming at it, you're going to have a mandible in your way, so you're going to be having to come at it from above like this. So once you find the lingual nerve, just keep going and uh, look a little lower, and that's probably where you'll find the hypoglossal nerve. Um, and that is, of course, our motor supply to the tongue. Um, so we'll see if we can demonstrate that. Um, Let's see, uh, let's identify um, the, uh, a couple of these muscles that are in the vicinity. So we already did genioglossus, that was the muscle on the medial surface of the tongue. On the lateral aspect of the tongue is where you find the rest of the um, extrinsic muscle. So um, palatoglossus, this is going to be a tough one to ID, um, it's, very, it's much smaller than what this looks like. Um, the styloglossus though, and the hyoglossus, these are pretty straightforward identifications. Um, that they, as I talked about in lecture, they have this sort of trademark L shape um, that where one ends, the other begins, and they are perpendicular. 
So um, look, on, it'll be on the lateral aspect of the tongue, come, coming down fr uh, from the styloid process, styloglossus, and coming up from the hyoglossus. You'll be able to see that relationship. And these nerves, lingual and in, uh, hy hypoglossal nerve, will have this relationship where they're running right alongside those muscles. Okay, so if you've got those muscles ID'd, then you can also identify the blood supply to the tongue. Um, the, if you remember from long ago, we did the external carotid. We had things like the superior thyroid artery, which went down to the thyroid gland. Um, and then we have the lingual artery, which branched from the external carotid, right about in the vicinity of things like facial and some of those branches. Um, the lingual artery um, is going to be in close proximity to the hypoglossal nerve, but once they get to the hyoglossus muscle, they split, and the um, lingual artery uh, goes deep. So um, you'll, you can sort of get into this space in the neck and show that the lingual artery goes deep to the hyoglossus, whereas the hypoglossal stays superficial. Um, so that's a trick. You can also do this from uh, the intraoral approach. Um, if you uh, are working in this space, you can sort of push this tissue apart and expose um, the deep surface of hyoglossus and find the artery in there as well. Um, so that's, I think that's all I need to show you there. Then we're um, turning back to the midline view um, and we're sort of done with the tongue and now we're moving into the palate. Um, these four muscles um, should have been ID'd last time or at least exposed last time. You might want to spend a little more time um, refreshing your memory or um, cleaning them up a bit more. But the um, levator veli palatini and the tensor veli palatini are the two palate muscles above the soft palate. Um, and the levator has this sort of orientation where it's coming towards the midline. Um, the, uh, below the palate are the palatoglossus and the palatopharyngeus. Um, named for where they go. So um, if you can't see them right away, make sure you've removed the mucosa in the appropriate area. Um, that's already been done here, um, and that will uh, help, help you see those structures really well. Um, putting the mucosa back for a quick minute, uh, this is um, sort of the vicinity that you should expect to see the palatine tonsil. So have a look and see if your uh, donor still has tonsils that are visible um, in there. If there's not, there might be a sort of some small wrinkles of tissue. Um, in either case, whether you have a palatine tonsil or not, we want to clear all of the tissue, the mucosa, fat, whatever's in that tonsillar bed, um, that space between palatoglossal and palatopharyngeal arches. We want to clear that tissue out so we can see what's in the tonsillar bed because we should be able to find cranial nerve 9 in there. Um, so once all that is, has been removed, then you can really easily see glossopharyngeal where it's coming into the posterior one-third of the tongue, and it will be almost every time running right on top of the styloglossus muscle. Um, so uh, that's, our, that's the story for um, the, that, that sort of palate region. Um, and the last couple things that I think you should probably do today um, sort of uh, re refresh your memory on the palate nerves. Make sure you've got those uh, those down, that if they haven't peeled down um, the palatal mucosa last time, um, do that today. We have a lot of extra time today, so um, it's a good opportunity to double back and get those things done. And then um, the other is, um, the, by this point, the mandible should be pretty mobile because we cut the mandible when we did the infratemporal fossa. Um, and now that we've cut the mandible in half, we can actually open the mouth. Um, and so go ahead and open the mandible uh, and get into this space and remove the mucosa from the cheek to expose the buccinator. Um, and if you go really posterior with it, you'll probably be able to also see superior constrictor. And then if you um, sort of concentrate on the area between around the mo uh, posterior molars, then uh, you may actually be able to see the pterygomandibular raphe. So um, that's the extent of our dissection today. This is the oral cavity dissection. Um, for the dental class, so um, I hope it'll be a good one. Thanks.